At the Highland Folk Museum, you can see lots of different eras of history. This cottage is actually created from drawings and they decided to replicate that kind of cottage. So they've used massive stones here to build the walls. They've also thatched the roof in a very traditional way. This is using reeds and the reeds would be used to um, make sure that the roof was watertight. So when it rained, uh, the water just rolled off of the roof. And at the top, they've also got heather and they also have some peat as well. And this is a, a living root. So there are still plants which are growing there at the top. Um, this is a typical township house from around the 1830s and 1840s. This church would have been built in around 1900 using corrugated iron or as it was called then crinkly tin and uh, this was used to serve um, a number of different Christian religions around this area. Well as you walk into the church you can see that it's actually very bare in here. There's barely any decoration, uh, just a few chairs and pews that you can see along the side of the room. It's a very basic building. It was actually built further away and like a number of the buildings in this museum, it was actually dismantled, taken back to the museum and recreated here so that people can see exactly what a church would have been like around the time of 1900. I'm here with Graham, who's Operations Manager at the Highland Folk Museum. Um, so Graham, can you tell us about how this whole project got started? Yeah, so it was basically uh, the founder of the museum uh, founded the first one in, in 1935 yep. and it was in Iona, a lady called I.F. Grant. Now she founded the first one in Iona and we're now moving to a very large store down at the bottom there. So okay. there's going to be 10,000 artefacts of Highland life from about the 1700s onwards. Wow, okay. that's amazing. So what we basically do here is we try and interpret Highland life from the 1700s to about the 1950s. And we do it through the use of vernacular buildings, like, for instance, the Highland Cottage. Yeah, and what other sort of um, periods of history are covered here? Yeah, we've got behind you across there is the 1930s schoolhouse, which is completely recreated. We've got desks in there, we've got teachers, we've got ink, we've got maps, all sorts of things that you would, and little games like the Gurdon Cleat. Uh, the teacher will give you a lesson, he'll show you the belt that used to be used. Wow. It's called the Loch Gelly Taws, it's famous. And yeah. is that a real It's a real belt, belt yes. That was actually used. Yes, they stopped it. that was outlawed in Scotland not oh, a few years ago, but yeah. unfortunately not before I had a, a few too many. Oh really? Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> What's the main purpose of it altogether? Is it to kind of teach people about history? It's, it's so that the, the way of Highland life is preserved so that people don't forget how things used to be. And um, is it mainly children that visit here? Or it's is a, it a, it's a big mixture. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, senior citizens, a lot of families, a lot of, st lot of school groups. We have, the last couple of years, we've had, uh, every year we've had 50 groups of American children uh, between wow. the age of 12 and 17. And what we do for them is we do a mini Highland Games to show them how that worked. Oh, and then they get to look around and, and buy lots of things in the shop. They love it down here. Great. Well, Graham, thanks for taking the time to talk Pleasure. to us. And uh, can we have a look around the site now? Of course you can. Yeah. Great, thank you. So I'm behind the shop front of the tailors here, and this is where people would have bought and sold uh, their clothing. I've actually found a coat that is quite a traditional coat of the era, the 1940s. Quite comfortable. <laughs> uh, so... They've got uh, lots of clothes and lots of it would have been made from wool as well because that's uh, the thread and the fabric that they would have had around this area. Um, behind me also you can see the things that you could buy because people wouldn't buy as many clothes as they do nowadays. Uh, they would just mend their old clothes and keep mending them every time that they broke. So you can see behind you can buy thread, needles, you can also buy buttons for your coat if they break and um, again more fabrics so that you can create your own design. This is a tailor's workshop and it was built in around 1918 and continued to be used as a tailor's workshop right the way up until the 1940s. Uh, if you have a look inside, you can see that there's a lot of windows which allow a lot of light to come through the windows so that the tailor can work at making clothes. And on the table, they have patterns so that they can cut out the fabric and the cloth and create clothes from those. Inside you'll also be able to see some traditional Scottish plaid and tartan and also some traditional clothes of the era of the 1940s.
Well, we're here in the Weaver's Cottage, and you can see behind me uh, we have the Kentish loom here. So this is how fabrics would have been woven traditionally, and certainly plaids, tweeds, and tartans as well. This is an old-fashioned loom, but it's actually still in working use, and people do use this uh, nowadays. You can see that they're gradually uh, creating this blanket here, and this is a very traditional type of tartan. Uh, tartans are actually used to denote which clan people come from, and different clans have different patterns and different colours of tartan. This is the Knockbane Garden School, and this was actually uh, created by the first school that was here. It would have been used to help the children to learn about basic horticulture and how to grow their own vegetables. And it's also used nowadays by a school, a local school from around this area, so that children can grow their own vegetables and learn exactly how they grow in the ground. Um, there's lots of different vegetables here. You can see uh, that you've got some herbs as well. We've also got some peas too. And I think over on this side, they're growing potatoes as well, which would have been um, very traditional around this area from that time. But uh, it's basically going back to the earlier standards of helping children to learn about how to grow their own vegetables. Well, we've had a fantastic day here at the Highland Folk Museum and there is so much to see and do. Uh, it's great for all different ages as well. There's something here for children, right the way up to adults and older people too. Um, so much history, so much to learn as well. And uh, it's really been a fantastic day out.